problem with the future is that it takes too long to get here. We've gorged our imaginations on fictional super toys and we want everything now. But in our race to the future, there's still so many simple necessities of basic space travel that we still haven't the slightest idea how to produce. Faster than light jump engines, multi-use tractor beams, artificial wormholes, weapons of mass destruction. We can't even produce something as simple as artificial gravity. We can only go into space with the physics that we have, not the physics that we want to have. As long as our imagination continues to outpace our invention, there's always going to be that gap between what we can invent versus what we want to invent. Whereas we would just love to have artificial gravity that can get just the push of a button, the actual way it's going to occur with honest physics that we do have is with the simple method of centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is visible every time we see that familiar sight of starships sailing in endless circles around a planet. It is the force of spinning. Anything that spins has this force that pushes it out away from the center. It's governed by velocity. A slow speed generates a weak force. But a fast speed generates a large force, a powerful force always pressing outward. Now in space, this force that pushes out is very convenient because there's another very obvious force that's trying to pull you in. Gravity! The idea in harmonized space travel is to balance those two forces, the outward versus the inward. Too much outward and you go flying off into space. Too much inward and you're pulled down and burned up in the atmosphere. But if you balance them, your ship is sailing smoothly through space, a condition which we call orbit. Standard orbit. Aye, sir, standard orbit. But what about artificial gravity? We've seen so much of that on TV that we just expect it magically to be there. But it will not. In the blackest depths of outer space, far away and above from any planet, zero gravity is the natural state. Zero gravity is what's expected. Gravity has to be worked for. It is a luxury, and unexpected when it finally does arrive. We have gravity. Until then, we're flying, floundering, and quite helpless. Can we duplicate gravity when we can't even duplicate a simple hand phaser? But we're not looking for anything fictitious. All we need is gravitational force. But we already have centrifugal force. And if it can equal gravity, it can also replace it. All we do is turn our expectations inside out. In an orbit, our forces balance on the outside. But space vehicles hold us on the inside. So that's where our phony gravity has to be. All you need is rotation. Notice you have artificial gravity. Our ships have to use rotating sections. 30% hit to rear decks. One more of those, we're going to lose rotation and go Z-gravity. Rotation equals force. Gravitational force. Imagine a rotating spaceship. A ship that is not stacked in layers like a deck of cards, but in concentric circles with the crew on the inside. Centrifugal force presses towards the outside, which means your crew is symmetrically pressed against the inside of their own ship. And this will work anywhere. Centrifugal force is governed only by the velocity of your spin and the radius of your spaceship. And that radius can be as long or as short as your habitat requires. From small intimate space vessels to orbital medium range docking ports to large gargantuan space stations, this force has no upper limit. Anything we can build, we can give gravity with an equation no more advanced than high school physics. I suppose you were hoping for something expensive. Well, who's gonna invent it? You cannot buy the future. But the fact is, not only is the simple physics that we have right now totally up to elementary matters such as gravity, in key areas it's even going to be totally superior to anything fictitious. Voice print identification. Shut down. 
Gravitational rotation. Shutting down artificial gravitational rotation. For one, if you want to stop your gravity, all you have to do is stop your rotation. No rotation equals no force. You'll find this to be a far more graceful procedure than just merely pressing the magic button and hoping everything lands where you want it to. And that's the entire problem with artificial gravity. It's inconveniently there whether you need it or not. Launch fighters. In the heat of battle, your own starfighters have to launch against the gravity of their own ship just to get into space. Conversely, rotation is already trying to push you out. Launch. So the better way is just open a door, let go, and let the force throw you right into the fight. But in the midst of all that flash and substance, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that centrifugal force can offer us a loophole to gravity altogether. The force depends on the speed of your spin and the radius of what's spinning. But at the exact center, that radius is equal to zero. Zero radius means zero velocity means zero force. So while on the outer edge you'll have simulated normal motion, on the inside, you'll have total zero gravity. Computer. Open shuttle doors. Oh my god. Emergency alert. We've had an explosion in the core shuttle. We need rescue jetpacks and we need them now. What are you trying to do? He's more or less weightless, but the ground is rotating at 60 miles an hour. If we can't catch him, he'll be killed by the impact. Well, you won't have time. Suiting up. We'll get there in two minutes. We don't have two minutes. You've got 30 seconds. We can't do it. think this is the sci-fi channel? Heaven forbid you watch TV to learn something. And I guess you just did. We can have artificial gravity. And we can have it with the physics that we use right now. It is already theorized, already calculated, and does not need to be purchased with a big dump truck full of money. On the contrary, it's going to be the expensive kind that's going to be the bigger problem. Totally fictitious, with no guarantee it'll ever be invented, no matter how much money we pour into it. Who says that when our starships finally do get gravity, it's even going to be a solution, rather than just another problem? It's always the simple equations that we forget, always the simple equations that we ignore in our impatient infatuation with stuff. And stuff is entirely the wrong priority, as space is going to give you plenty of chances to get hurt with it or without it. And that's the real trick, isn't it? Our greatest achievement in space travel is not going to be the stuff, or the spaceships, or even gravity. It's going to be simple survival. Earning the right with what we've learned to live another day. And we can get there with all the physics we know or can know, because we are smart enough to learn it and smart enough to use it. Especially the simple stuff. Look how far our simple physics has brought us already. Simple actions, simple reactions, simple ambition. To see how far our ambition can take us now, just sit back, hold on, and watch. Watch.